We have Maltese Falcons going up against Travieso Polo. And uh, now's a little aerial shot there of uh, the field. We are, of course, coming today from Valiente. There you can see the field at uh, Valiente. Very nice, con great conditions. 77 degrees Fahrenheit, slightly overcast. Ideal temperatures for this 16th game. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. We've been waiting for this. Uh, yeah, and as you said this morning, we called, well, the Sweet 16. It's it's one of those games that kind of falls into place because these are the teams that are getting that extra chance to make it into the semifinals. So uh, you want to go through the uh, teams really quick for everybody? I would be delighted to. The Maltese Falcons, then we have uh, out there in the red shirts, Mia Cambiasso. Uh, playing the number one position. Then we have in for Paquito de Navais, Martin Haregi. Now remember, Martin is a six goal at Paquito was a five, so that slightly changes the overall team handicap. Then Poloto Cambiasso at number three, playing off ten goals, and Alejandro Novigio Estrada at number four. And I'm just being told there might be a slight little change here. Um, we have, I believe... Uh, Perotto is playing the four, thank you very much. And Alejandro is playing the number three. So just to, to make a little switch in the lineup, a little switch in the lineup. And then over to uh, Travieso, the very talented and the very strong three goaler, Anthony uh, Calle at number one. Tomacho Pierre is, well, you know what I think about him, one of my favorite six goal players of all time. Tomacho Pierre is at number two. Pipe Vecellino, another great uh, polo playoff, seven goals from Chile. And, of course, the 10 goal at Juan Martin Nero. Both of these teams, uh, as you know, Dale, coming into this very important playoff match with uh, a two-in-one under their belt. So, mm -hmm. looking forward to how they fare. And, uh, as you can see, on your screens, the uh, ball has been thrown into play. And away we go. And it looks like uh, the Falcons with, uh, well, You'll hear that name a lot, I'm sure, this uh, afternoon. Mr. Porotto Cambiasso taking his first shot on goal, and that was, uh, I would say, Dale, the first Remington of the match. Wow, very close right there. And we are live from the Valiente Polo Farm, field number one. This field will be very, very fast. And, uh, Jan, as you put it, both of these teams are open-style, run-and-gunning teams, but they do have the ability to slow it, not slow it, but play in more of a constricted area. And uh, we'll see how they decide to do it. But right now, it looks like they're going to open it up, and away they go. And uh, there is that man I was just talking about, the number three, PP Vecellino, lethal, anywhere on the field. Incredibly talented, technically uh, absolutely top, top shelf. And um, the man he's up against there in the red helmet, of course, another very, very... Uh, strong and uh, experienced player Alejandro Novigio Estrada and he's got his hands full there trying to control the man from Chile Pipe Vecellino turned around now by you know who the number two and that is Tomacho Pieres tees it up very nicely for the 10 goaler Alejandro uh, he's complaining but he puts it through and the umpire raises his hand yeah now this is a brilliant pass by Tomacho Pieres. Watch, it actually gets missed right there. But watch, he turns the ball quickly, takes it to the board. Now keep an eye on the right side of the screen. He sees Nero there. Open back shot, right to Wanmar. Wanmar, quick line change. Nobody can make a play. Easy goal. Yeah, that is the World Polo League in a nutshell there. Absolute top polo here being shown <clears throat> in that combination, as you said, Pieres and Juan Martinero. Back to the halfway line. They go. And, uh, yeah, they're going to be fighting for every inch here. This is, uh, as you said, Dale, the game that's going to determine who will be playing against Pilot in the uh, two of our semifinals. One semifinal is already set, and that's going to be another interesting one. Father and son, or father against son. So uh, a little bit like uh, the Cambiasas, we're going to have a similar scenario with the Gansies. Hey, you got a young Audi that came in first play. Well, there's first place in their bracket, in the, in the bracket of four. And uh, we'll talk more about that as we get to the courtesy change because the action is hot right now. Let's stay with it. Okay, on the move then. Once again, the Whites have it, Tony Kaye. And, well, Dale, need I say more? Well, three quick goals here, and that's where we figured with this game it was going to be a high-scoring game 
good pickup here. Tony Calle, this is great for Tony's first opportunity, first shot on goal. And that will give him a huge amount of confidence, playing well on three goals. He is indeed, and uh, I think you're going to, I think you've called it, Dale. We're going to have a very high-scoring game here. No rest for the wicked. Both of these teams want this win. <clears throat> here we go, then, on the halfway line. Ball thrown back into play. You can see there's a break in the sky. Sun coming out nicely, as is this young man, Peroto Cambiasa, coming out of that huddle. Has a little look over his shoulder. Uh, it's just a formality, really, for him. And, uh, oh, his second shot on goal just wide. Mm, and he got to give it up to, you know, you know what we're talking about, Tamacho Pieres. And we've been praising him all season long. He's a hustler. He played, played, his father played the same way. I just love watching Alfonso. Talked about Gonzalo, Gonzalito's father, Gonzalo Perez, and Tamacho's father, Fonzo, and they, they play that two position and they hustle. On the ball, it's going to be Pipe. Vecellino, the young man from Chile, keep a close eye on him. He's also uh, an absolute uh, super talent. Nice pick up here on the near side. Clever the way Kaya uses the sideboards as a fifth man, waiting for the ricochet to come off and then picking up very, very nicely. Now then, the switcheroo. Back to the Maltese Falcons. Daisy cut a shot all the way up to the front door from uh, Alejandro Novigio Estrada. He's found the number two, Haregi. He overrides. Oh, everybody seems to be overriding that particular ball. But uh, it will be a nice pass going to Tomacho Pierres. And uh, I always like it when he scores as well. Gets out in front. He's got Mia coming in from behind. Pierres. Que golazo. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Another give and go. And re remember, these are the give and goes that are so special because watch Tomacho's already on the move. And, and I like Proto. He actually he ran by for the Maltese Falcons, and he knew he couldn't get the ball. He was going to hook, but he went and made a, made a hard hook like uh, on Pipe so he could probably save a little time because he knew that Tamatra was already busting. And when you're moving, the ball moves quicker than the pony. So well done there by Tamatra Pietes. And then Mia putting the pressure on him, but Tamatra with the approach shot hits the ball to the left so he could run away from Mia. So she had no opportunity for the hook. Now remember, we are uh, playing. We got a, a, well, everything's in place today. The two-point conversion <clears throat> from center field. Anything scored from beyond the center will be worth two. The uh, buzzer beater is in place. Any goal hit, ball hit before the second horn, and if it carries through, it will be a goal. All the challenges are in place. Each team will receive one challenge per half. You need to use it or lose it, and you can challenge any. Play, uh, call the umpires make and ball placement. All triggers are in place. And go through it really quick for you one more time for any of our new viewers. Check and see if a goal is scored. Check and see when the ball goes out of bounds on the sideline or the end line. Anytime the four legged athletes come together on a hard ride off or the two legged athletes come together on a hard hook. And of course, they have the umpire trigger where they can, if the umpire disagree, they can use the third man slash IRO in the CTV studios, our instant replay official. So here we go then. Back to the halfway line, three goals scored, one on handicap, as you can see on your screen. Remember, due to that change <clears throat> with uh, Martin Haregi coming in for Paquito de Navais, that team has gone up to 25 goals. And uh, Travieso, of course, still on 26, hence that one goal on handicap. Turned and... Uh, Tried to clear, and she did very well, clearing it. The two siblings working very well together, of course. Mia feeding the ball to Porotto, and he takes uh, three shots out of the air. A fourth, a fifth, a half volley. Look at the ball control. But uh, it uh, could be game over when Tomacho gets a piece of it, and he does. Near side backhand shot, looking for Calle. A little bit too slow on the turn. Left now for the man with the red helmet. And that, of course, is Alejandro Navijo Estrada. He passes it over to Hauregi. Hauregi with a long distance shot on goal. And just wide. Whoa. <clears throat> nice attempt here by Martin. Thought Martin was going to be a big choice here for the Maltese Falcons. And uh, thinks he'll fit the team well. First time playing with him, though, so he may need a chuck or so just to get it, get it going. But I think uh, as the game gets on, he's going to get stronger and stronger. Good combination. 
I would uh, agree with you wholeheartedly, but now let's see uh, if uh, this young man, Juan Martinero, yeah, there's another power shot, slightly mm, topped it. Yeah, you're going to get a whistle here. <clears throat> Keep an eye on the number three on the replay here. Remember, on any set play, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Keep an eye on number three to the left of your screen. And then keep an eye to on Haregi in the red jersey to the right. Watch the number three come from left to right. It's coming right now, right there. He's going to block right there. And that's where you're going to get the whistle. Wow. Moving pick. Um, and uh, that's going to that's gonna, uh, that's gonna hurt because that's going to probably right, be right there inside the 60. So you're going to get the, well, you're going to get a, they're going to put it at the 60 for the penalty four. Ooh. Well, it yeah, goes is in. Is that Mia? Uh, I stopped. Someone stopped it. Yeah, it was about to go out. And, uh, or Haregi. It, it was, yeah, the number one, uh, number two. Yeah, Martin Haregi just picking up that ball, which looked like it was going to go out. <laughs> We're doing about 120 miles an hour. <clears throat> it was either replay from the other end, the direction, but that ball was moving. Proto hit that ball. It was low, and Martin deflected it and put it in the goal. What a goal. What a way to end the chucker here. So, well, we got a match for you. Three to two. We'll be right back. Welcome back to CTV Sports. I'm Dale Schwetz. And I'm Jan Eric Frank. And this is a great shot there of the grandstand here at the Valiente Polo Farm, field number one. And I'd like to welcome you uh, on this Good Friday, and I hope it is a good Friday for everybody, ahead of the Easter weekend. The Maltese Falcons in the red shirts up against uh, Travieso in a very, very crucial, very crucial and deciding game here to determine who is going to go through to the semi-final. We know that Audi and Casablanca have already secured that spot, so the outcome of this very, very important to see who will be facing Pilot in the two semi-finals. Very <clears throat> strong team, Pilot. Yeah. Very, very strong team, so they're going to be coming out of it. But both these teams, they are, uh, they'll be ready to go. And they've already shown us that in our first chucker because it has been an open chucker. It actually was controlled early by the Travieso team, but then uh, multi-Falcons, they came alive at the end. And uh, But it has been up and down the field, open passing, turned around and controlled now by Nero. Monma, going to get picked up here by Mia. Look for the drop. Going to drop that ball for Tamacho. Pieres will leave that ball now for Pipe. Marcelino from about 120, and he's in range and just off to the right. So both teams shooting that goal. 
And uh, like we said, we thought it was going to be a very high scoring game here. Good shot now, Perotto, Gambiaso. One of our 10 goalers playing here in the Palm Beach Open this year. <clears throat> His father also played for the Maltese Falcons. They switched it up a bit. Outlet pass on a knock in, looking for Alejandro, but picked up and controlled by Nero. Wamar. And he will turn it on the halfway line. Nicely done. And uh, here we go then. But immediately surrounded there by red shirts. Looking again for a little outlet pass. But uh, Perotto Cambiasso steals it. Turns the action around very quickly now. Perotto just holding fire a little bit. Here comes the pass. Is deflected. Pierres will send it back. And he saw that Calle had already turned going the right way. And that's a perfect pass up to the front door. That rotation now working very well for Travieso. But can he get round? Excuse me, Martin Hauregi, Nero. Mm. Unlucky. <laughs> good D. Very we, good D. We knew Martin would bring the energy to the Maltese Falcons. He will definitely bring the energy. Playing number, both the number twos today. Keep an eye on them, Tamancha Pietas and Martin Jauregui. They're going to be a big part of this game. Uh, working in the middle, as I say, doing a dirty, clean business. And also that defense. Very, very strong. And that's a good part right there because Juan Mara was on his way. Gabi Peralta, ooh, ooh, a little bit of a miss, broken play. Uh, now, who turned first mm. and who got on that line? To me, that looked like it could have been to match up. Yeah, you know, it works on a broken play in the World Pole League. Usually a goal or it happens. It's just bad luck here. Proto had a lot of room to work, so he was off to the races and just kind of skipped over his mallet. Good turn here, though, as um, Alejandro trying to get there. Had to go for it. And then you have not, uh, pro, uh, looks like uh, Tamacho jumping on it. We'll see what they decide to do, if they want to look at it or not, based on the timing. They have a trade. They go in triggered. Mm -hmm. Not a bad one to trigger here, one umpire, because you, you remember you got, you got Proto dropping the hammer there, so the umpires are dropping the hammer. Sure. And then, you know, of course, we're playing Proto for the hit, everybody in the world. So, you know, just a, just a broken play. So then you got everybody grabbing and turning back. And so m maybe not, not easy for the umpires to see there. So a great trigger. Because one umpire could see it, the other umpire couldn't. They didn't have two. You want to make sure you're 100% on this play. It's a perfect play to send to the IRO. Yep. He can look at it. He can slow it down. He can see the distance because it's a distance call. And um, going to be an open goal penalty two, 30-yard shot. I like the call. Good work by the umpire team. And it uh, doesn't take a challenge away from any of the players, any of the teams, but definitely making sure you're 100% pre precise on this play because if Alejandro came through there quick enough and saved that, in the end, it'd be really tough to, you know, to see a, an, on the tape after a game. So it's a great one to look at. This as is you a great said, one to review. As you said, that distance, it was all about distance. Um, and. Uh, Executed very nicely by Pipe Vecellina, picking up his first goal of the match. And that uh, changes the scoreline ever so slightly. Four goals to two now in favor, <coughs> excuse me, of Travieso. On the boards then, here we have Alejandro Novigio Estrada. Another one of those uh, powerful hitters. Look at this ball up to the front door, a little under the next shot or a backhand. And what's he going to go for? No, he's going to take it out to the boards. Create a little bit more space. Controversial to say the least, but that is why he is 10 goals. To try and take the ball around the outside of all the traffic. The cut shot, maybe. Ah, cheeky <laughs> little chip shot there. Nicely done. <laughs> yeah, you can say he took the long way home, but it was fun watching him. <laughs> you knew he was, he was setting something up, and that's what he did when Yan said, you know, when he was headed out there. But he headed out. Mia, of course, following him. Does a great, nice little pick there. And that is a beautiful shot, how he just chips it over the back of the defending player. So, as I said, just uh, a very, very small gap in it here. Nice shot of the man who just uh, scored that amazing goal. I have an idea. I think I know where he gets it from. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's got a lot. 
He's uh, learned a lot from Daddy, but Daddy will tell you that uh, when he coaches them, he, he allows them to do what they want. You know, he gives them ideas, and uh, and then he allows, and then see, you know, they they mix and match, and uh, that's kind of Adolfo's coaching style, and um, and then, but he always has something, of course, but he does. He's very open with the way he, he uh, handles his. At first, he wasn't into the coaching, and he really started getting into it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's done a great job because all of his kids, uh, Mia out there, of course, let's not forget Mia, super, super talented, super strong, uh, will take on anyone and anything. She's, uh, she's very, very uh, courageous, uh, extremely confident, and um, uh, holds her own very, very well. So congratulations to all the Cambiasos. Uh, and also, of course, the young daughter who was in the PTF yeah. playing uh, uh, Mila. Mila was playing. Yeah, yeah, she's starting to play now. She's the youngest. Yeah. And, and uh, she, she'll, she'll, she'll end up being the best. <laughs> all the youngest ones all come along. You never know. A bit like the, you, Dale. You were the youngest. Days. Well, you know, whatever. But they, they, uh, they uh, never know. You never know. Now they're, they get to start so young now. And also they have so many uh, just participants in the, the uh, PTF and also what we do here at Grand Shannon Pole Club and the Aspen Valley Pole Club <clears throat> for the juniors. Here we go. He, he was once one of them. Now he's one of the best in the world, Proto. On the move. This time, no mistake. Make sure he hits the ball, takes it with him. And uh, yeah, he's going to have to get past Senor Tomacho Pierres. Yeah, he's done well. And, of course, this is where the horsepower is so instrumental. Look at that. Easy, nice, calm swing. Uh, follows through, not too much uh, unnecessary power. And uh, he was trying to lay that one up for Alejandro Navijo Estrada. It's intercepted by the other tank goaler on the field. There he is, Mr. Juan Martin Nero. And that's it under the next shot. Looking for Vecellino a little bit too deep as that ball, ooh, will not be cleared. Coming down the line, and there she is. And uh, Mia Cambiasso. Trying to get a little bit of space for herself. Has done very well. Picked up on the near side. At least he's trying to. Tomacho Pierres has the ball back for Travieso. Round the outside, he will go. Still, Tomacho. He might have to run this himself. Nero pops in behind to support. Still, Tomacho. Yeah, and he needs to be careful because that near side little chip steal will come very quickly from any of those defending players. Left behind. Good. Uh, Good team management here, set up by Travieso. Notice how they all sort of uh, stack up behind each other just to support, and we have a whistle. Yeah, both teams kind of looking for new things to do now. <clears throat> and early, yeah, so just goes to show you how both teams are just kind of set up different plays or <clears throat> going for giving goes. Just a little <coughs> bit. Let me try to open that ball. I went off the mound, a little weird there. I mean, Alana was trying to hook up there with uh, Haregi. Bad luck, broken play. And once again, uh, Travieso will capitalize on it. And uh, this will be another opportunity for virtually, you know, one of the top shooters from the penalty line <clears throat> here in the World Polo League. 40 yard, I mean, 60 yard, penalty four. First of the day for Pipe. He's got a one for one. He has a penalty two under his belt. And he always hits him. Oh, man, he hit that one high. He did. Was that in or just wide? Looked pretty wide to me. Was it? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, just wide. So you could dodge a bullet here. And that would have been the equalizer. So back to uh, Poroto. Knocks it in. Sends it out to the right-hand side. Again, not a clean hit. He's going to have another crack. Here we go. Nice long ball intended for Martin Auregi. And he will pick that one up. And this is what we love about the Walpole League Dale, the, the one touch and the precision of uh, these one touches when the ball comes to them. It's, um, I often think of the, uh, you know, the ideal quarterback uh, with a pass to his wide receiver. How they sometimes get exactly within that frame to pick up that perfect ball. And we can see that here in the World Polo League as well. These passes are so precise and uh, so thought through. 
and very often the catalyst for starting a new offensive play. Well, that will bring us to the end. That whistle will bring us to the end of the second period of play. A goal apiece. More to come. Stay with us here, CTV Sports. Okay, welcome back, everybody. And a great shot there of the Valiente Polo Farm. Actually, that that uh, footage coming from Field Two, and as you notice there, the Valiente, uh, well, pretty similar to the setup at the Grand Champions Polo Club, where you have the the uh, grandstand in the middle of Field One and Field Two, so you can go from each side. <clears throat> beautiful, beautiful Polo Farm. Three main Polo fields, practice field. World class track, and that's all in the background right there. And of course, magnificent stables, as all of the polo farms have for those amazing four legged athletes. Uh, looking through some of the stats here, Yan, one uh, stat that stands out is is uh, Pilot uh, did play Maltese Falcons. So, if Maltese Falcons were to win, then we will see a rematch. Pilot actually. Uh, Pulled out the game 11 to 9. And it, I think if you remember that game, it was uh, well, quite the game. It was a lot of different things going on in it. Um, and so uh, that would be a, a, an amazing uh, rematch, if so. And then Trevier, so of course, they're in bracket three. So they have not played. So that would be a, a new game to them. Uh, third trucker action on the knock in Proto. Cambiasso, where is he going to send this one to? He's got Martin in front. A little bit undecisive, and again, Tomacho Pierre has been uh, allocated to, to take the hitter. And uh, Pipi Vecellino, as much as he's a very good hitter from the line, a penalty taker, but he's also uh, extremely talented uh, in that regular play. Now then, watch this. Mia going up, wanting the ball to come from brother Barotto. Well, she was able to pick it up on her stick side. But uh, she does have a little bit of uh, traffic in the form of Juan Martin Nero. Yeah, no mistake now, Mr. Ten Gola, because Mia Cambiasso will give you... Oh, nice try, Mia. I was going to say, we'll give you a nice little goal here. You don't want to concede. So, yeah, I wasn't uh, sure if she was going for Proto yeah. or if she was going to go for the goal, but she was going for the goal in another Remington. Yeah, another Remington. Very, very close. A good D. She's a hustler. She, she is. She'll, she'll, and she's so strong. She gets next year, and she just fighting and fighting and fighting, and 
Um, well, Walmart knows her very well, so he's going to have to, he'll have to work hard to get free. On the ball, on the move, and it's going to be the, uh, looks like Tamacho. Now, now, what's he got up his sleeve? Just taking the pace out of the play a little bit. Nero's behind him, yeah, and there's the, uh, the daisy cutter shot. He was looking for Vecellino. Cleared by Mia, looking for brother Porotto. Nicely picked up on the near side and drags it into the corner. Now he's got to get round Tomacho. Leaves that one behind for Haregi. Haregi will uh, drag and take a player with him. Leaves it for Porotto. He will now in turn once again give it back to Martin Haregi. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if you'll be looking for Mia. Yeah, there's that uh, rotation working. Oh, a bit of a mistake there by Kaye. Now, look at this pony. Open up nicely for Cambiasso. Mia looking for a little gap. Alejandro comes and gets a piece of it. Left behind and turned by Vecellino. He knows he's got the support of a Tangola behind him, but he wants to run it himself. Plays it over to the left-hand side. Nero. Yeah. Just crosses the halfway line. The reason I say that is because you know, it would be nice to see a player, as we were talking yesterday, approaching that halfway line, tapping it, and then mm -hmm. knocking one. We've not actually seen that. Still very much waiting for our second two-point conversion. Yeah, we haven't seen one, and uh, we've had a couple, um, well, a couple chances this season from a few other players. Like you said, Santiago Tocolino. Making it from center, but we have Fred Maddox almost made one. Proto almost made one also, and uh, Alejandro. So we'll, they'll get one. Nero's pretty uh, got the long ball too. We'll look at this play right in front, saved on the doorstep by Alejandro. Here comes Pro Mia. Nicely done, very nicely done, and uh, power play here by both teams. Shot on goal. Very clean polo. Very clean polo. Yeah, yeah, once again, we've seen that a lot in uh, this year. And I commend the teams, sponsors, teams. And uh, we've had an opportunity to review so many plays and talk with a lot of the umpires. And <clears throat> we've had a couple chuckers in each game that got a little dicey. Where you, But then overall, the games have been, been uh, very good. And also, you'll see your stats at halftime, remember to hold on uh, as we go break into the half. And so you can kind of check the numbers. But it was great, like, watching uh, Casablanca the other day. They, they had nine fouls in the first half. Yep. I think only three in the second. Yep. <clears throat> and what a second half they had <clears throat> to come back and and secure that spot to, uh, to get that third place spot. Yep, no, no, absolutely. They, uh, I think they must have heard you because they definitely cleaned that up. No, they, that was one of the things they needed to fix yeah. or they would have been in trouble. <clears throat> and um, especially against, you know, you don't want to put Santi Tocolino on the line too many times. And they just did a fabulous job on, on oh, well, first of all, they took their game to a whole other level playing wide open polo. Um, I got to talk to... Uh, uh, we were talking with... Uh, uh, some of the team last night and Rufino Benzidon. I was talking to him about his uh, his Bay Mare. He played in the I think in the fifth or the sixth. You remember that one he yeah. <laughs> kind of boom, 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 yeah. what did he, he score like two or three goals I think. Um, and then he scored three goals in the sixth. Oh, he did. He was actually on fire yesterday. He uh, he was uh, incredible. Yeah, he had three goals in the sixth shucker. And yeah. uh, that was that that was on the main. Bar. He gave me he told me your name. I see he said I'll send it over to you when you're Next time I play, his lineup, a lot of players have been sending them in, so we appreciate that. And uh, we love bringing it to you because we know the fans love to, love to know the horses and the breeding operations that are involved. And there's so many different ones in the World Polo League. All right, back from the courtesy change, Proto. Yeah, he's uh, not hitting those, those initial knock-ins uh, as far as he would have liked. Very quickly, uh, Traviesa always coming in. Uh, mind you, they are standing very deep. This time it is the turn of the Tangola. He will now leave that for Pipe Vecellino. Now a little chip shot there looking for Tomacho. Hauregi comes and jumps in between. There is the attempted backhand shot. But now can Perotto get to that ball quicker than that pony that uh, Tony Kai is riding? Picked up by Mia. Uh, good non-call there as uh, Vecellino was appealing. 
enough uh, window and enough of a gap uh, to allow play to continue. And this time that ball will go over the back line. We're going to push Wanmar into the into the coffee corner, and that's a good place to push him because once he gets around the corner, you know you got to watch out. So they'll set up again here from the knock-in. And uh, Travis is doing a good job keeping them, shutting those yep. knock-ins down. Yep. And this still uh, looks like uh, Maltese Falcons still trying to get that, 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 that set play going. Yep. Here I we go, Alejandro. With, I agree with you. Here we go then. Turned. Calle. Tomacho. Oh, just beaten to it there by Reggie On that halfway line up. Pretty significant kind of bump. come together. Yeah. Yeah, might be a little uneven. So we'll see what they decide. Remember, both teams still have challenges. Third chucker. <clears throat> so you might see or talk, but this is the trigger also, if needed. Bait right there. Tomacho's running cross field. Martin comes in from right to left. <clears throat> makes a play on the ball, but then after he makes a play on the ball, then they have the contact. And with that contact, a little uneven. A little bit behind. Same speed, but... Behind the saddle. Remember, umpire looking for somewhere in the middle. Get too far in front, too far behind. It's going to become a little dangerous. And, um, yeah, just, just off just off of the judgment a little bit. And uh, But they'll move this one up. So this is where you got to watch out. They're going to move from the center. They go to 60 based on the contact. So penalty four. And put Pipe back on the line versus Leon. Oh, man, man, man. Pepe off again. Yeah, this time off to the left-hand side. Do you want to look at this one or not? If it was close enough, <clears throat> remember, they can trigger any of the... Goes look at the wind blowing from the north today. We checked with our field side correspondent on that. Looks like the flag's right there, right? Yeah, and blowing yeah. directly. Yeah. This field runs north and south. <clears throat> field one and two. And three, actually. And um, so they might do a quick check on that. They have the ability to check any of the shots on goal. And anything that's close, yeah, they went and triggered it. And why? So Proto. On <clears throat> the move again. Nice ball this time out to the right-hand side for Alejandro Navizio Estrada. But uh, there he is, Tomacho. Thomas Pierres, as you say, doing the clean and dirty work. And uh, when he can, he will also, believe you me, take the ball and score. Now then, Jauregui. Yeah, he can't waste too much time. Calle. Solid. There is the pass. Now look at where that pass is going to go. And who's going to pick it up? Yeah, nicely done by Mia. Wanting to feed the ball back to her brother. Pecciolino. Nicely done. Turns things around. And feeds that ball to Juan Martin Nero. He gets it back into the Maltese, Maltese Falcons territory. Can he take it all the way? Yeah. Jauregui coming in for the challenge. He's done enough to break that play and that run. And now, Cambiasso on the near side. Nicely done. Elegant, nice motion there by uh, the 10 goaler. And uh, well, where would you be without your sister? She uh, picked up that uh, that, low, that loose ball. Kaye tried to keep it in play, turns it, gives it to Pipe Vecellino. He has it taken off him by Alejandro. Uh, I thought he might go for a little uh, under the neck, but now he wants to take the ball round. Leaves that one now for Porotto. Aregi, oh, cleverly done. Very good play here by the Maltese Falcons. And look at this. Can, uh, he tried mm. to just get a piece of that, but uh, the little play before I thought was very, very clever. Neutral polo. Yeah. But uh, ballet, poetry in motion, actually, ballet, no, not a lot of fouls. Uh, we, we thought we were going to go high scoring, but we went low. But look at look at the shots on goal here by Travieso. And both teams. Um, better shooting by Maltese Falcons. For sure, but 12 shots. Travis only got four only four goals out of it. So that's that's something they're going to talk about. All right, we'll send them off. And, um, well, you don't want to miss the second half. We'll be right back.
My name is Nacho Estrada. I'm from Argentina, eight goals. Hilario Figueras, five goals from Argentina. My name is Martin Jauregui. Um, my handicap is six goals. I'm from Argentina. Silvestre Navillo, and I'm from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Tomás Pérez from Argentina, and I'm six goals. Francisco Spinacci, and I am from Argentina, Buenos Aires. I'm Juan Bolini, and I'm uh, a three goal polo player right now, but it could be eight. And uh, I'm from Argentina. I uh, know, actually, now I'm American. No, here is a, it's amazing. The view, the, the fields, everything is uh, super nice. The question is what I don't like about it. I think I like everything about it. Uh, the weather, the field. Right now in the summer, I would say it's the best club in the world. Friendship, the, the people, the, the scenery, everything. Eh? This is my seventh year coming in a row and I feel like I'm at home right now. So me and the family were around like, like we know the place for a long time and, and we enjoy the summer a lot. When I come here uh, winter and summer, I actually like Aspen more in summer. There's more stuff to do. All the mountains around here, like it's a pretty nice place and it is nice to play because they are very good horses and I play with a lot of friends. No, I like the polo, the horses and the people. I like to do mountain biking and to go to the lake. Yes, going to the lake, uh, stay here in the barn, everything. It looks amazing, it's my first time here, but uh, all the, the, the things they, they're doing today is, is amazing. So I'm going to be... Uh, Enjoy, and I appreciate you to, to inviting me to be here in the, in the season. Christmas in July, uh, kids, are, kids are always looking forward for it. The day they come to Aspen, they know, they, they related with Christmas in July. It's an extra that they have here. I like Christmas in July because we like get all together and we receive a lot of presents.
All right, welcome back, everybody, to ZTV Sports and the Whirlpool League Palm Beach Open 2024 playoff. And there's a great shot. And you see the tree right there growing. It's in the middle of the stable. Yeah. And it is just a beautiful, beautiful uh, structure. So, you know, we're looking through the uh, stats here because we uh, in, in the uh, third trucker, like I said, it was like poetry. It was just like a, a ballet. <clears throat> no fouls. We had one foul, one penalty four, but no, not one team, no goals. And uh, so, but I looked through the, looked through the stat, uh, the stats on the games that they played. And both these, both these teams are right around where they are. They're, they're, they're both second half teams. So it should be an interesting second half um, on their way uh, to get to this playoff. So here we go with our second half. And, of course, we have the Maltese Falcons in the red, if you're just joining us, with uh, Mia Cambiasso, Martin Jauregui, Alejandro Navis Estrada, and Peroto Cambiasso. And in the white jerseys, Travieso with Tony Calle, Tomacho Pieres, Pipe Virgilio, and Wama Nero. And here we stand, uh, three, to, uh, three to four. One goal given to the Maltese Falcons to uh, start off. And uh, just kind of a, uh, you said it was kind of even neutral polo there in the first half. It was indeed. And uh, barely had they come back out here. The two number threes, you can see it, Alejandro Navijo Estrada and Pipe Vichelino. There's that little touch right there, uh, which uh, Alejandro is, uh, yeah, uh, claiming should have uh, been a foul in his favor. And uh, the umpires have... Uh, Agreed. They had a look at that. So hit from the center, a 5, a B. And uh, he's gone and done exactly what you were saying yesterday, Dale. Tapping the ball one or, once or twice and then going for the shot. That's what I'm saying. That's then maybe they should start yeah, taking it yeah, back, you know. Exactly. I haven't seen that yet. Right. When the teams take it, sub 5, B, but take it back eight yards, tap yeah. to the line, and then, and then smoke it. So we'll see. It might happen now. Uh, but they were going for the uh, possession play anyway. On the move, though, now, look at this. Yeah, look Looks like uh, Pipe was on the move, but it's going to be Proto. And, and again, a very good example of horsepower. You know, just uh, getting that extra little bit of juice out of those ponies and just getting there a little bit quicker than your opposition. That is what makes and can make all the difference. Haregi. Uh, nice little near side backhand from Kaye. Nobody home. Nero too far afield to pick that one up. It will be Proto. Yeah, and again, that was a, a perfectly timed shot to uh, Martin Haregi, who was completely unmarked. Getting a nice bit of yardage now. Wait for that to drop. Nice bit of D-Wear coming in from uh, Kaye. There is the open backhand, and uh, this could be a run for Pipe Vecellino. Oh, unlucky. Uh, Kaye is there. He will pick it up, and he does a very good job indeed, leaving it for Pipe Vecellino. Pierre is taking on Alejandro, getting him out of the equation. Yeah, a little bit unlucky. He had two Cambiasos in hot pursuit as uh, Nero comes in for the challenge, wins it, stops, turns. Aparato must allow a little bit of space. The shot from, I'd say, about 55 yards out. Ooh. Travieso, the numbers... And never lie in our stats. That was that was interesting to see that the Travis team had shot a goal many times. And they had 17 shots, I think it was, and uh, only four on the board, and uh, well, three three from the field, and then one from the penalty line. Penalty two. They had two f uh, fours wide, two uh, 60 yarders. But otherwise, that's all. That's all the penalties. And on the other side, I think, uh, yeah, like I said, a very uh, clean game between both teams. The uh, Maltese Falcons uh, only having a raw penalty four. No, he went was just wide. <clears throat> actually, they triggered. And um, or actually, no, that was the four that Haregi made. Yeah, yeah. Proto hit it low, and it was all, it was then uh, Martin was standing on the post and actually deflected it in. And otherwise, otherwise on both sides, both teams very clean here. So, a little break. All right, a little horse change. 
And uh, no triggers needed. I mean, no uh, challenges needed. Not yet, no. Never need, didn't, didn't need any. Uh, during the Palm Beach Open, let's see, uh, the uh, Multi Falcons, they, uh, they, uh, they played three games. They challenged twice. They won one, lost one. So 50% 50, uh, 50 there on theirs, the Travieso. Um, they only, they played three games and they just challenged once in three games, lost one challenge. So both teams not needing the uh, challenges in this tournament much to get to this spot in it, in the tournament and breakaway coming. And on the move again, Travieso, and there he is, Tamacho Pierres, Tamacho Pierres. He makes it look so easy. He's calm, he's composed. Oh, beg your pardon, that was uh, Pipe Vecellino. Uh, he makes it look so easy, so calm, so composed. Nice little play and a nice goal here for uh, Travieso, and they extend their lead back to three goals to five. Yeah, it looks like complete rotation here, and actually he had uh, Juan Martin actually going forward. So we're seeing a little different movement there with uh, the number four in white going forward. Alejandro had to stay with him. That gave Pipe an open, clear run to the goal. We'll see uh, what kind of adjustments uh, the Maltese Falcons make. Now it's going to be Nero going to goal. Now then, let's see if he's going to do this one himself. Wouldn't be surprised, Nero. Yeah, there's the shot. Slightly out to the left, not much at Calle. Oh, he tried to just keep it within the boundaries of the field. Falcons, of course, wanting and watching that ball to run over the back line. Very unlucky, but great effort there from uh, Anthony, a.k.a. Tony Kaye. Yeah, they're going to go and use a courtesy change here with 335. So you're a little bit longer here as the Travieso team has their horses on the south end and Maltese Falcons on the north end. I'm going to be uh, looking to see what they talked about in the tent on these set plays. We talk about the knock-ins and the penalty fives, uh, A's and B's. You get a, um, more opportunities at the knock-ins and the five A's and B's than you do at goal shot penalties usually in a game. So you want positive polo plays out of them. One of the um, strong parts of the first half for Traviesa was shutting down Maltese Falcons before they got the center. So I'd like to see if they go. Now, we, we saw in the pilot game, which uh, became a very tight game between the Maltese Falcons, uh, Proto going to the control game. Yes. Where he was moving the ball and getting a lot of help from everybody, blocking, doing some nice moving picks. And uh, Proto, um, he, uh, he got a lot done. It was, it was uh, they, they, he actually... He didn't score a lot of goals. He scored one goal in that second half, but he he had four penalty twos or three penalty twos, which uh, Paquito de Navarro was 100% from the penalty line. So definitely with the control game, it changed. And uh, if you look at the score sheet, they actually went into halftime nine to four, and uh, they lost nine to, or they were uh, probably had nine. They had four and they lost 11 to nine. So it definitely worked. So we'll see if they decide to go that direction. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Novicio Estrada, a little under the next shot, looking for uh, how uh, yeah Martin Arregi intercepted by Pipe Vecellino. Yeah, there's just uh, one too many red players uh, for him to deal with. But now this could be a breakaway play and a uh, nice first touch by Poroto Cambias. And look at that pony. Look how calm and graceful she just brings him to exactly what he wanted to finish. So Poroto picking up his second goal of the match and uh, reducing that deficit back down to just one goal. Yeah, this is the first give and go that we've seen that Poroto had a pass given to him where he can break loose. And that was a great back shot by Martin Haregi. Martins had uh, Poroto in the center of the field. Nice 60, 70 yard back shot. Proto already on the move, and as you said, an amazing horse. On the halfway line, yeah, Mia nearly picked it up, but uh, 
she can always rely on uh, Martin Haregi. And look at that three-man motion here for the Falcons. And this, I'm sure, will be the equalizer brought to you by Martin Haregi, also now picking up his second goal of the game. Yeah, both teams coming out offensive here in the second half, looking to score goals. And again, get to win the bowling, get the offensive attack. Martin getting out in front of everybody. And of course, everybody on fresh legs just came out of the curse. He changed, scored two quick goals. So five apiece. We're in the fourth, a little over a, a good minute and a half remaining. And uh, after that uh, stale mate chucker with no goals being scored in the previous chucker, now things very much heating up. Kaye, a cut shot. Uh, didn't quite get the angle he wanted. This time he's kept it in play and he nearly scored a, well, dare I say, a Heta Cambiasso goal. But look at that, he did enough for uh, the number four, Juan Martin Nero, <laughs> to pick this up. I call it a game of inches. Well, this is a game of inches right here. Lays it right out in front and just far enough away from the goal to make it easier for an excellent goal by Nero on the open back shot. Yeah, well done. Well done, Tony, also. Yeah, I thought Tony might go for the goal there. He kind of hit it down the left side. I think he was going to go for the cut shot, but he hit a little bit too far. But nice, nice uh, uh, recoup there to get it back in the game. Uh, is it going to stay buried? Yeah. Tough luck, buried ball. But you remember that goal that Hector scored? Uh, for Audi, yeah. When you, uh, when you thought he was just trying to sort of keep it in play and it actually went through. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I, I like how Tony didn't actually go for the goal. He kind of put it away from the goal a little more. Just made it easier for Nero to do uh, to hit the uh, open cut shot. Little chip shot out to the left-hand side. There he is, Tomacho. Yeah, he's got to be quick because uh, you see how quick Perotto comes out. Uh, knowing to time it just right. Cambiasso in the corner. Oh, he's done very well. Very well played indeed. And with so much calmness and uh, composure. And now the shoe's on the other foot. Tomacho coming back to try and steal the ball off the Tangola. And he is just waltzing through all of that Travieso defense. Cambiasso, yeah, tried to pick that one up on the half volley. Very unlucky. I uh, think he was going to run out of time. Yeah. He was going for the buzzer beater, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because if he would have hit that one, it would have gone in the lake. Because he took a swing at that. Well, here we go. We are in for, um, should be a pretty amazing uh, fifth or sixth chucker. We'll be right back. When I founded the Taqueria 48 years ago, the goal was to service polo players field side and carry a complete line of polo equipment. Since those early days, we now carry everything for the horse and rider. Anything goes on or near a horse, you're likely to find here in our store. We still have polo equipment made by polo players for polo players. All right, here we go, everybody. Fifth chucker action. And, uh, well, 
two to two coming out of the uh, half. Uh, each team scoring two goals in the uh, Fort cool. Chucker. And what a uh, what an opening second half. Checking and, out some of the stats here. Also, uh, standing wise, Pilot uh, they were three and zero, and Audi. Pilot was in the uh, cross bracket. They're in bracket one, playing in bracket two. The three and zero, uh, and Audi. So to find out who was first, Audi was in the uh, four four team bracket, bracket three. They both were three and zero. They both had plus eleven net goals. They had to go to gross goals. Audi, I mean, Pilot had forty, and Audi had thirty nine, wow. and that's how they picked first and second. You want a, you want a tight tournament? Yeah. Well, there you go. That shows you how tight this, how competitive it's been this year in the World Pole League. It certainly has, and uh, exactly as you were just saying, this also a very very tight uh, game here. Just that one goal in it, and uh, it's still, I think, uh, anyone's game. Not that I want to say it's too early to tell who might have uh, the slight advantage. I think, uh, as you were saying, Dale, very fair, very open, very clean, very competitive. No need for either team to use any of the given challenges. Remember, they have a new challenge, of course, in the second half, but just the one challenge cannot be brought forward. As uh, Alejandro Navijo Estrada working it very well here, deep in his own half, trying to send that one up to Porotto. Yeah, Vicellino saying, well, hang on a minute. You can't just come across like that. And uh, we do have a whistle on that play. Mm, bad luck here for Porotto. He had to wait on that just a little bit. Alejandro was going for him. And he had to wait just a little bit. Just a little bit. That, that, that other, just so many close little plays in this in this game. Game of inches, Dale. Yeah. Otherwise, Proto's off to the races there. And uh, good call. You know, just bad. remember, Proto's got to lean back for that. So, got to get on the reach, and you got to give it up. First, you know, getting a, getting a little kick out of his pony there, the bald-faced pony here. Love the bald-faced ponies there with the white down their face yep. called bald face. I had one. Well, I had two. Beautiful like looking. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. And uh, personally, from about 80 yards out, 5A, he's in range. Mm. Unlucky, unlucky wow. monster shot. Yeah. Like right, Pipe. 0 for, 0 for uh, 3 on his on his uh, goal shot penalty from, 60, uh, from 80 or more, or from 60 or more. So here we go then, once again, Poloto out to the left, feeding that ball nicely to Martin. He controls it very nicely. Yep, a little bit of a, a sword fight going on. Kaye, tiny Kaye, working it from the near side to the onside. Left once again for Alejandro. And uh, he'll be looking, well, she was just biding her time. Mia Cambiasso, but it's going to left, be left once again for Pipe. Vecellino keeps it low, wanting to give it to Nero. Yeah. This again now is, I think, uh, more of a defensive minded uh, phase of the game. Both of these teams not wanting to make any mistakes and give the opposition a slight advantage. Well, that's the second time we've seen Perotta take a swing. Uh, and a miss, able to uh, recover that possession. Well done, Perotto. But he's got Nero. Nero on him. Oh, well played. Well played, Perotto. Now then, Nero might get a piece of that. He does. But uh, is there, are there any white shirts in the vicinity of that uh, return ball? No, it'll be Alejandro. And uh, Mia not quite getting the ball that Alejandro couldn't control. Now we have a whistle. And this will be an interesting one, Dale. Mm, yeah. They, they come across. Mia was trying to get jump on the right of way yep. before, but I guess people gets out in front, and then they come right there. They they might they might take a look at it. We'll see. It's a tight play. But he comes from the side, but it was weird. He was kind of in front, and then he. Yeah, it's uh, 
one that we're going to have to just have another closer look at. Travieso seem to think it's going to go their way. Yeah, so they did challenge it. Oh, they did. And okay. you know what? I mean, there's an open goal, and is this is a tight play. I mean, especially on the field, if you could imagine, as, as they've been playing, we'll go with PB here with the open goal penalty, two, 30 yard. Yeah, they're going to say. So maybe a little too far, too far. Uh, he was a little bit too far in front, and he went from the side. So coming from the side, remember, he's so, it's such a tough play. Either you, you're either coming from behind or they come from the front. So, but he, how he got it done was but blows me away but we've seen so many amazing plays like that but they're gonna they're gonna call him for uh i guess you say riding from behind but kind of maybe from the front you know because yeah, yeah. yeah it looked like, it looked like uh, uh first Lino had the ball and then P proto's kind of waiting on him to to go from the side so uh they're gonna lose their challenge though so a little bit of an advantage here for for travieso in the second half and at the moment, Dale, they uh, are doing everything, I'm sure, the way the coach uh, has asked them to play. Remember, Travieso have been in the lead uh, for most of this game. In fact, all of it, three goals to two at the end of the first, four goals to three at the end of the second, four goals to three, well, because there was no score at the end of the first half. But now here, chuck a number four. Again, six goals to five for Travies and at the moment they're in the lead by two and that could quickly become three if Hauregi does uh, not put his his stick down he did Kaye might have been uh, better to have been a little bit closer behind that player on the move again Cambiasso slows it down uh, Mia she's found a gap Still, Mia Cambiasso wants to shake off uh, Tomacho Pieris. Didn't quite get the connection on that uh, on that shot. So Pipe Vecilino will turn things around very nicely. Ball comes off the boards, picked up by Nero, gets it on his stick side, stolen by Porotto Cambiasso, and uh, we know what great horses he's riding. Turned by Hauregi. He's got Alejandro. He's got Alejandro. Yeah. He certainly does, but mm. the ball, ball just didn't quite get to him. Yeah, he had Alejandro going center there. Couldn't get, couldn't get around him. Good defense. You shut it down. You're going to go to the courtesy change. You're going to get a, you're going to get a fair, fair play, fair play possession to Travieso here, which makes sense. Two twenty-one uh, on, on the clock there running and gunning for a while there so uh neutral territory so they'll go ahead and uh, let everybody change and uh well here's the opportunity now down by two i would think you'll see uh multi fouls come out pretty well mounted here maybe try to try to get this evened up um at least get another one and be ready for the six indeed and what will be going through that man's mind, Juan Martin Nero. Great captain. Yeah. Great captain. Everyone you ever talked to, like I say, today I think probably the best number four in the world, especially uh, here in the highest rated polo in, in the U.S., 26 goals, of course, outside of Argentina. And I, I agree in, in Argentina during the Opens. Love his style, love the way he plays. Also, uh, his uh, had the opportunity to umpire at a professional level a lot when he was captain and uh, teams, and then uh, just being on the inside of the field between the boards, as we say. And uh, this is a top-notch guy. Runs his team at a high level, and he has the ability to turn it on, uh, as do most of the ten goalers when you need it. It's like uh, who you want to give the last shot of the game to in basketball. Nero, maybe one of them. So, see if I uh, keep his team going here. But you know what's going to happen on the other side, of course. Proto's going to going to get his team going here, and uh, they had that little 
little lull, and then both teams came in strong in the fourth. They had a lull in the third. It was it was great pole to watch. There's no goals being scored. And then they came out, bang, bang, scoring goals. And uh, Travieso picked up where they left off in the fourth and uh, had a couple opportunities more on penalty shots. Pipe had the 80-yarder, and then he got the two. But no goals yet for Maltese Falcons, controllable, uh, fair play possession, Travieso. Now that, uh, of course, Mr. Pipe Vecellino gives it back to Juan Martinero. And uh, oh, yes, indeed, why not try one of those long, long shots to goal? Too far out for Tomacho Pieris to pick up on. Cambiasso was there just a split second earlier. So deep in his own half, Porto Cambiasso will uh, start and launch a new counter offensive. <clears throat> that will not quite go to Alejandro. Now it will, because he was just waiting there for that uh, play to break. Uh, but again, Poroto wants to shake Pierres. Little chip shot into the open field. Now the uh, the pass up to the front door. Michelino will get there just before Martin Hauregi. Deflection uh, too far out for a. Uh, are ready to get another piece of. Mia was also coming in, but again, a little bit too far to uh, pick up that ball. A true breakaway here, Tamacho. <clears throat> With uh, a little over half a minute remaining. Now, if he can pick this one up, this would definitely put the pressure on the Falcons. Well, Tamacho Pierre is. Goes and does it again, also picking up his second goal of the match. It's very similar to his first goal. Yep. Breakaway play, perfect pro shot, and just an easy finish. Well done, Tuancho. And again, good give and goes here, already on the move. Horses moving before the ball is being hit. <clears throat> and that's when you get those four and five length runs. And uh, all right, so get ready for your six chucker. We'll be back. Another great season. We got a blast this year. Great fields again. They keep getting better and better. And we got lucky with the rain this year and uh, had a lot of fun polo. There's nothing better than being out here in Aspen playing with these great people. Amazing views every day. I mean, how could you ask for more? Best part about being out here in Aspen for the polo is the fields, the community, Melissa and Mark, the great competition. And, uh, and the amazing horses, and how the horses enjoy being out here. I love the town, I love the valley, I love also spending time here in Carbondale. Um, so I just love this place in general. I have a lot of friends, I've made lots of friends over the years. The Gansis has have created a spectacular place here uh, that has become a really important summer destination for polo in America. Aspen, I love it that our family's around, there's a ton of horses, a ton of golf, and a lot of fun polo. So. Welcome back, everybody. 
Grand Champions Polo Club bringing you a very important match here on this Good Friday uh, afternoon. Now, the Palm Beach Open, the Maltese Falcons against Travieso and Dale called it just now. Six chucker action, and for the first time in this match, just before the end of that last uh, chucker, Travieso picking up a superb goal, uh, which has put them in the lead by three goals now. So a very good uh, situation for them to be in. Dale, the big question is, what and how will the team in red, the Maltese Falcons, come out here now in this six chucker? Yeah, no, you just got to think about scoring goals here. Um, no challenges, so he's got to keep your head down and go for it. And uh, just go with it. Focus on the goals. And because, you know, you got, you got a fifth, third chucker, no goals, fifth chucker, no goals, that's not like them. Um, and... Uh, even though the third chucker was a push, both teams not scoring goals. Uh, the Travieso team has, has kept the rhythm. Yep. Two, two in the fourth, two, uh, two in the fifth with opportunities. And uh, now they're going to start the six off with a uh, penalty shot here. Nero reaching foul, right away violation. And uh, I believe you get the open goal three here. Might, well, this is might not. Might be a 60. We'll see where they were located. Now it's going to be a three. Oh, penalty two. I'm sorry. So they must have had. They moved it up for some reason. So check on that. Well, that is the third penalty two for Mr. Vecellino. His fourth, okay. over, his fourth overall. So they're on the offensive attack. Yep. That's all. They're on the offensive attack. So good space, good spacing. Tony plays the front, you know, especially when Nero's at when Nero's on the ball. You usually have one or two players going to goal there between Tamacho and uh, Tony. So four goals is what the Falcons need to score very quickly. So it was a technical number three to move it up to a two. Gotcha. All Thank right. you, Dale. Well, that would explain why that moved. Uh, they moved it up to a, a two. But as I was saying, four goals in it. And uh, just shy of six and a half minutes remaining to play here. And uh, Travieso have possession. Nice ball along the la along the boards, I should say. Intended there for uh, Pipi Vecellino. Nice near side back and coming from Cambiasso. Picked up by brother Porotto, and he wastes no time sending Martin Hauregi towards that south end of the field. Little finishing touch. Did he do enough? He did. Yeah. Great, great. Uh, well, Warma was going for it, but uh, perfect pass by Porotto. And uh, <laughs> one of them are. Um, Martin leaning just out in front. Another game of inches game play right there of the swing of Nero. And that ball's going to trickle across the end line. But that's, this is where they want to be. And that's what they need to be playing right there, that open style bang the ball because they need to, they're playing against the clock now. And uh, but they, have a lot, they have time. This game's not over. No, it certainly isn't. But Travieso won the throw in once again. Nero waiting for the ball to come back to him from Vecellino. Vecellino on the near side. Nero on the near side. Trying to just steer that one between the uprights. And uh, he's keeping the pressure on Perotto. And he will let that ball run over the back line. So I like this uh, tenacity. This, uh, yeah, let's uh, get the job done until the very last second of the play. Perotto. Knocks it back into play. Plenty of time for the Falcons to pick up uh, three goals to make it nine apiece. And whilst doing that, of course, trying to uh, hinder Travieso from going into double figures. Well, you see they come in and they challenge early. Alejandro. Long ball downfield. Nobody home. Pierez out towards the boards. He saw that uh, Vecellino was cha uh, changing. No time here. They come around. That ball bounces out right over to Proto. Mia, she'll control, slows it down a little bit. Tony takes a swipe at it, bounces out. Nero now, that's the give and go, and he's going to find Pipe. Yeah, and he will run this one. 
Vecellino, yeah, unlucky there, had a bouncing ball. Cambiasso tried to send it back, but Tomacho Pieris keeps that pressure on the Falcons. Uh, again, a bit of a miss hit there by Martin Haregi. Now Mia. When in doubt, ask Mia Cambiasso. She'll sort you out. In comes Tomacho. Nicely done. And uh, once they've got their teeth into this team, as you can see, this is the way they've been playing, Dale. They have not eased up or given uh, anything away. A little under the neck shot there. Oh, yes, indeed. Pipe Vecellino just stealing that uh, right at the end of that play. Yeah, I think they're back there. When they play their open style, um, and that's the way this uh, Trevieso team has been um, successful. They play the four-man rotation. It's going to take us to the courtesy change here. Big goal here. Huge goal. Goes the other way before the courtesy change. Then the Maltese Falcons, you know, they're, they got a big breath of fresh air. They get a goal. It's a two-goal swing to get that goal right before the courtesy change. But now everybody's going to get on fresh legs now. And, you know, these are some of the top, top, top ponies in their strings. So uh, four down now with 312. Still got time. Uh, based on the way we've seen goals scored here in the World Polo League. But that little extra goal, that extra goal is a huge goal for Travieso at the, at the moment. Pipe's uh, fifth goal of the day. Yeah, but uh, don't write these uh, Maltese Falcons off no, just no, yet. No, no, no. Maybe you know. got the two-point conversion also. And, um, you know, we've seen, well, we've seen... Three goals scored in two minutes, four goals, actually. That this is where, you know, the the Travieso team has kept them off the line all the uh, this whole second half. Certainly They have. have not given, they've only given the Maltese Falcons one goal shot penalty all day. One penalty four all day. Wow. And um, that's just... What do you, you always say, Dale? Defense wins championships. Yeah, I mean, and I was talking about Nero being just a great captain, but, I mean, I got to give it up to the whole team, just playing strong defense but not fouling. And, uh, you know, you'd like to get to the line. Uh, you know, all these teams want to get to the line a little bit, but uh, it's just one of those days. That they, they, they're, 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 what we've seen, well, a lot of the teams, most of the teams in the World Pro League, are, they're playing, they're so well organized, and... And the, this season, alone this season, we've had, like I said, we had a couple chuckers that got a little bit scrappy where we had we had to have some fouls and opportunities for opposing teams, but not, not much, not much. Here we go on the bowling. So, three, three minutes left. Exactly. I was just about to say the remaining three minutes left to play to determine the fourth position of the uh, the Palm Beach Open semifinals. To uh, three teams we already know, we've mentioned them, are, uh, of course, uh, looking forward to uh, competing for uh, the place in the final, Audi Casablanca, and then Pilot, who I'm sure will be watching this game very closely because the outcome will determine who they will face in their semi-final. Now then, Porota Cambiasso, is he going to be the man to seal the deal and get his team through? Or will it be... Uh, Travieso, who will just uh, keep steering their way through and uh, getting into the final. Now then, Cambiasso uh, trying to just nudge that one in with a a backhand shot there, but uh, Tomacho Pierre is... Good D, good D. Yeah, and, it, again. and this now, Dale, is uh, what you don't have at this level or at this uh, phase of the game is time. And as soon as that ball gets taken so far downfield and we're within, we're under two minutes left to play now. It's going to be, uh, well, it's going to not be much of a, of a miracle here. Yeah, but there's top clock twerking against them. They'll get the, get the change of possession. And Perotto. Yeah, you could see he was going for it. Monster shot. And what a cracking goal. Yeah, I thought he might go backwards with that. <laughs> and then try our try our neck deep neck shot. This is an amazing goal. Look at Pro though from like 140, 130. Wow. And it went. Where did it land? 
I mean, that might have went from center. Yeah. I mean, he hit that very, very well. So let's see. I mean, you got to get another one now. If he wins the bowling here, he might be able to bring it back. And he's going to get me on the breakaway. Well, let's see if Mia can do exactly what uh, her brother did. Oh, well done, Mia. Look at her go. Yeah, she wants it. You can tell she wants it. Can't she keep it in play? Well done. Well done, Mia Cambias. All right, now, two-pointer. They're going to have time. Oof. Bowling. Bowling. Shoot for to shoot for the two pointer. Uh, bowling get fouled and bring it back to the center and hit the two pointer. Oh, they're just gonna go ahead and lay it down. Okay. okay. Wow. Okay. You got to play the finish final final time here, but there you go. There's your stats. Look at the shots on goal. Traffic <laughs> so 22. Wow. Yeah. Man, that is a that's a lot of shots on goal. But look at the knock-ins, twelve. So uh, they, they get that. That's what they're, they're just gonna have to clean that up a little bit against uh, Pilot. They got they got a handle Yan on when it comes to keeping the the Pilot team off the penalty line. Now just clean up the choice shots and they'll be right. Any final words? Uh, first of all, congratulations, Travieso. Well done, Tony. Calle, Tomacho Pieris, Pipe Vecchiolino, Juan Martinero uh, for securing their spot in the semifinals. Commiserations, but uh, nonetheless, I thought it was a great display of the Maltese Falcons. And remember, there is, of course, still the Triple Crown, so I'm sure we will see them back in action. 100%. For Jan Eric Frank, I'm Dale Schwetz. I speak for everyone here at CTV Sports when I say thank you for making us leaders in polar broadcasting. And always remember here at CTV Sports, we love the polo.